Good morning, internet friends and family. Folks, as you pop on, hit the like button, drop over in comments, tell me who you are, where you are watching from. What I just found out is it's not mind blowing. We all knew this is where AI was going, but let me quote something from you guys. I see the world changing in front of our eyes. And if we aren't in the for forefront of cutting edge technology, we'll lose. Said you, I believed that through the AIA Phantom program, I'd be able to learn more in depth about the real use cases of AI in the military and how it can be adapted to suit our needs, not just in the overall big Air Force, but at the squadron level, group and wing level. All right, what am I reading to you guys? I am reading to you guys an article that I found from Joint Base Andrews. So if you're following what is happening right now with the airplane that went down by DC, right? There's Andrews Air Force Base right there. We're he hearing that it's a military helicopter that basically tracked <laughs> this plane and hit it. But here's what I am asking you guys. Were there actually pilots on the Black Hawk? And if there were pilots on the Black Hawk, were they in control of the helicopter? And no, it's not tinfoil. I'm fixing to break this down step by step. What AI can do in a, in a plane, you guys, not just planes and helicopters, the whole nine yards, because... We're a lot more advanced than the average American realizes. And I'm fixing to show it to you right now. It's called Vista, an unmanned fighter jet piloted by artificial intelligence. Flying head-to-head -head in a dogfight with a manned F-16, even outperforming the human pilot. Defense officials say the U.S. is the only military in the world with this technology, successfully flying a jet with artificial intelligence. And this is the first time cameras have been allowed to see it. Up till now, there has not been a pathway for machine learning agents to control uh, the you know, flight critical systems of an aircraft. On Thursday, the Air Force Secretary made an unannounced trip to Edwards Air Force Base. There is a pit of Suiting up and going for a ride in a mock dogfight, flying nearly the speed of sound, separated by just 1,000 feet from the manned fighter jet. He says the technology still needs work. We see our ways to go with it, but making good progress. But some test pilots aren't sure. This artificial intelligence, this robot, and they're they're so new and we don't really understand fully how they work so you don't trust the aircraft to be flown by ai at this point uh no not really like drones they could fly ahead of manned aircraft during combat conducting strikes too dangerous for human pilots but unlike drones the computer will be in charge not an operator thousands of miles away and even though humans will still be involved in making key decisions this raises serious questions is that a possibility, really, this kind of technology going rogue? I think it's too early to say it is or it isn't. Do you ever see a, a point of fully autonomous weapons? So U.S. Air Force aircraft that are fully autonomous weapons. We're not going to unleash killer robots on the battlefield to kill anything they want. That's not going to happen. We're going to make sure that we comply with the laws of war. Kendall says the future is not far away. AI could be in cockpits in the next few years. Computers flying missions once considered too complicated for anything but the human mind, soon changing the face of combat aviation. Courtney Cuby, NBC News, Edwards Air Force Base. Thanks, sir. There it is. That's where they've been doing. Up to you guys, too. Hit the like button, drop over where you are watching from. Guys, this, this is like breaking in the discussion of what happened to this airplane. So we know that there were professional U.S., you know, um, Olympic ice skaters. There was a Russian couple on this plane. But we also know a Black Hawk helicopter, basically, it looked like 
the helicopter tracked it. I'm going to show you guys that. So I'm going to go ahead and read this article from November 27th of 2023 from the Joint Base Andrews. That is Andrews Air Force Base. It says non-technical phantoms excel at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Artificial Intelligence Program. A select few airmen from across the world have emerged from the shadows to tackle a variety of different artificial intelligence projects for the Department of the Air Force. What they share in common is their desire to bridge the digital divide and bring AI back to their home units to solve problems. Not all these airmen are engineers or programs. These airmen are called phantoms. The phantom program is a comprehensive fellowship at the Department of the Air Force, along with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology AI Accelerator, which provides opportunities to learn from the brightest minds in AI. Personnel accepted to the program are called phantoms and work along some of the top AI researchers in the world, as well as with other airmen and guardians who drive long-term DAF MIT AI projects. Over a five-month period, phantoms provide their subject matter expertise to various projects and generate new processes for transitioning AI from research to operational use. Exactly, Kent. Remember the movie War Games. Hello, North Carolina. So guys, this is so important because the information is readily out there. We're not talking science fiction. I'm not talking tin foil hat you know, conspiracies. I'm talking real science. It says that um, under the auspice of DAF MIT AI Accelerator, phantoms delve into the deepest realms of AI, pushing past traditional boundaries and showcasing an unparalleled zeal for adapting to the digital age. So what boundaries would they be talking about? The fact that you kind of need a human pilot in that helicopter, in that fire, fighter jet? Well, I just showed you a video of a fighter jet flying with nobody in it. So if they can do that with a fighter jet, could they not also do that with a helicopter? I'm just asking. Every cohort in the fellowship is composed of both technical and non-technical phantoms. Phantoms are directly sourced from their career field managers. Non-technical phantoms are unique in the sense that they don't necessarily have a background in computer science. All phantoms require their commander's approval to participate in this program. Now, this program is running out of Andrews Air Force Base. You're very welcome, Savvy Sav, about the uh, the dogs and the ivermectin and stuff. Very welcome. It says the unstructured results-oriented nature of the Phantom program resonated, allowing him the freedom to dictate the course of his research, all while harnessing the vast resources at MIT and within the AI Accelerator. The program honed his ability to manage time efficiently, seek out answers autonomously, and engage in a fruitful exchange of ideas with his cohort. So I'm trying to fast forward through so you don't have to listen to all that. It says, as a force support professional, you research.